Scholars on Film. This broadcast was made possible by Stelzner Corp. And viewers like you. Thank you. Hello again. I am your host, Sir BBKK. And on this episode of Scholars on Film, we will be analyzing existentialism. I am here today with Sir Nick Shinstad. Hello, how are you doing, sir? And Very Sir well. Michelangelo. Hmm. Hello. So the first movie we can begin with is I Heart Huckabee. Mother or mother or what am I doing? What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing the best that I can. No, that's all I can ask of myself. But is that good enough? Is my work doing any good? Is anybody paying attention? Is it hopeless to try and change things? The African guy is a sign, right? Because if he isn't, then nothing in this world makes any sense to me. I'm Maybe I should quit. Don't quit. Maybe I should just quit. Don't quit. Just, I don't know what I'm supposed to do anymore. This film makes absolutely no sense to me. I'm completely baffled. It, it has, it tries to make a debate about existentialism and it tries to make it into a comedy. Mm-hmm. Well, can you explain that? Uh, yes. At first sight, the existentialism and the nihilism and the absolutism do not appear to be fertile ground for a comedy, let us say. However, in this film, it is a comedic framework of the individual struggling to find meaning within his environment in which the producer frames the entire philosophical debate. Now, the, uh, the protagonist, the main character, Albert, and his uh, companion, Tommy, are wondering what is the meaning of these things which are happening in their lives. And they encounter many philosophical viewpoints along the way, in the end, synthesizing them into one framework which they find to be compatible with their experience. Okay, I see. And c can you explain to us the philosophies they encounter on uh, their journey? Yes. It is uh, an elementary philosophy, really. The three philosophies they encounter are the uh, existentialism, uh, as espoused by the existentialist detectives, which is concerned with the individual struggle to find meaning, mm -hmm. and the absurdism and the nihilism, uh, which are more less hospitable to the concept of finding meaning and overall more concerned with the lack of meaning in the universe, lack of objective meaning. Mm -hmm. So, can you explain to me the, the nihilism scene in this film, Sir Michelangelo? Well, basically, uh, Albert, the protagonist, mm -hmm. tra goes with Tommy to the quote-unquote dark side when he joins Katharine von Baum and uh, accepts her view, her nihilistic view of the world where everything is despair and we cannot escape from human suffering and uh, no, nothing is important because everything is disconnected and you are all alone. So, watching the film, everything just seems random, spontaneous, a, a better word, maybe absurd. What do you think? From the, the point of view of plot development, this film is completely, patently absurd. It makes no sense. Um, absurdism is not the basis on which to build a plot. Uh, really, it is the presentation of the philosophies uh, through the use of humor, absurdist humor, as used by Samuel Beckett, mm -hmm. which in make, gives this film its meaning. The use of, for example, the scenes where we see the characters repeatedly whacking each other in the face with balls and finding meaning this way. It makes no sense, but it is funny and it is ultimately in the absurdist spirit. Also, almost, the character... Almost snaps the humor. Uh, to the untrained eye, perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, uh, furthermore, if I may, for a moment, uh, mention it, we see the travails of Gogo and Didi in Samuel Beckett's play, 
uh, reflected here in Albert and Tommy, who spends the entire movie searching for meaning, just going in a circle, doing things which seem to us to be pointless, meaningless, but at the end they feel some sense of fulfillment. But to us, they have gotten nowhere. Precisely. Th thank you very much, sirs, for discussing this film. And now we will move on to analyzing The Truman Show, starring Jim Carrey. The film basically chronicles the life of a man whose life is just a TV show. There are oddities that occur in Truman's life, and he must piece together these events to find out that his life is just the subject of everyone's amusement. So, Sir Michelangelo, I will start off with you. What is the existentialism seen in this film? Well, I find it uh, notable to mention that uh, the main character's name is True Man. Hmm, interesting observation. Yes, and it is ironic his name implies truth while his whole life is a lie. It is artificial and it is manufactured, it's not true at all. Mm -hmm. Now, the existentialism seen here is that uh, in his, this false world of his, Truman lives his life as if any normal guy would, but he seems to have no purpose. And uh, when he starts to take a hold of his life into his own hands, and uh, make things happen himself, he realizes uh, and finds true happiness, which is the message of existentialism. You have to take matters in your own hands. Hmm, I see. And in the film, we could basically say the director is, in, in Truman's case, God. He controls everything. He controls the weather, the sun, the people, and how they act around Truman. And in the end, when Truman finally confronts his, th this director, he basically decides to leave this world. W what can this film be saying about religion, Sir Nicktoonstock? In this film, we see repeated again and again a theme which has become a centerpiece of the existentialist philosophy. And what is that? Um, as perhaps articulated by Nietzsche, God makes up a puppet out of man. Mm -hmm. Indeed, one cannot but conclude that Truman has been a puppet until the end of the film when he liberates himself by defying God and leaving the uh, set, the scene of his life. Um, and in this sense, we see a parallel to Gregor of uh, the Metamorphosis by Kafka. Um, for Gregor never makes the sleep of taking control of his life mm -hmm. and leaving and doing something for himself and creating his own meaning. He never reaches the stage and never attains happiness. Whereas in his departure, Truman takes matters into his own hands and makes himself and, and gives his life meaning beyond that prescribed to him by God. Interesting. So we must take matters into our own hands. This is what this film is basically saying. To find true happiness. Thank Indeed. Thank you, Sir Michelangelo. Is there anything you guys would like to add on the film, Sir Michelangelo? That is the last time I would bear this insert! It is not Michelangelo, it is Michelangelo! Oh, I, I am sorry, sir. And on that note, we will end our program on existentialism on films. Come back next week for Scholars on Film to see a post-colonial analysis of the Jersey Shore. BBKK has gone mad, but it has been a pleasure serving on this show with you. Uh, may, may I join them? In good health! Until next time. The post-colonialism... The post-colonialism... The post-colonialism... <laughs> Primarily, our main character's name is True Man. Ah! I just realized I'm not wearing my jacket. What? <laughs> Were you wearing your jacket last time? Yes. Uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> A post-canoli- <laughs> Post-canoli- <laughs>